Okay, well, uh, first, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So, uh, today and this afternoon, I would like to focus on the quenching of massive galaxies. And by massive galaxies, I think uh, of uh, M star galaxies, so galaxies with a mass around 10 to the 10.6 uh, solar masses. Uh, this is complementary to what we saw this morning because uh, people focused on different galaxies and in very rich environment. And what I would like to check and to see with you is that if there is an, an influence of the cosmic web on the quenching of those massive galaxies. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to mention is the, the diversity you have among galaxies. And uh, this picture is particularly telling because you have everything. You have uh, different shapes, morphologies, you have uh, different uh, colors, so spectral uh, types, and you have also a cluster, so you have uh, the, the, the type of environment, uh, and different types of environments. So to explain this, uh, actually, and especially uh, to, to place galaxies in an evolutionary uh, uh, picture, so different studies have been done, and you know uh, perfectly well this uh, picture where you have the evolution of uh, spirals into elliptical galaxies and where you have uh, spirals that are star forming, that are blue, and uh, elliptical galaxies that are red and dead or quiescent. But actually what you have is also a significant fraction at a low redshift of, uh, let's say, 10% of your galaxies that do not fit within this uh, picture. So you have uh, red ellipticals, uh, red uh, spirals, sorry, and you have blue ellipticals. So this starts to tell you that uh, the evolution of galaxies may follow different tracks or different paths. So another uh, quite interesting thing to see is that uh, across cosmic time, um, uh, uh, an increasing fraction of galaxies stop form forming stars, and definitively. So this is what we call quenching. And uh, you can see that at least from redshift four, and the, the, the number of quiescent galaxies has increased since, the, since then. So, um, but as I said, <clears throat> the quenching of galaxies may uh, follow different tracks, and you have several processes, physical processes uh, that may uh, intervene. So uh, here I list at least three quenching channels I have worked on uh, during my uh, career, but. Actually, uh, there might be difference and others. So the quenching I would like to talk to you uh, today is this one. So actually, the slow quenching, uh, I will show you why, of massive galaxies or what is called also fading or starvation. Uh, so galaxies that reach uh, uh, high mass will start slowly quench or um, stop forming stars. So you have different processes that you can uh, you can invoke uh, for that, and uh, we will try to see which ones uh, could be uh, at play. So, so in this slow quenching, so what the first thing I uh, I could uh, show a few years ago was that um, this quenching is slow, so it takes about a bit, uh, several giga years for a galaxy to cross what we call the green valley, so to to be to to leave the main sequence of the star formation and then to be totally quiescent. So uh, here you see the typical mass of those of those galaxies is around 10 to the 10.6, as I said. Uh, here you see the typical uh, um, uh, quenching timescale of these guys, and you see here how they would uh, concentrate in a NUV minus R R minus K red frame uh, color diagram. So this kind of diagram is very powerful if you want to separate quiescent from star-forming galaxies, but also uh, is very sensitive to different uh, quenching, quenching timescales, so it's very nice to, uh, to use. So if you add on the top of that the fact that these galaxies have very um, narrow, uh, I mean, they have a mass typically around 10 to the 10.6, uh, 10 but you can convert that into a mass of the halo, which is about 10 to the 12, to the 12.5, 12 and this is very constant. So above this mass, uh, the, the, the probability to be star forming is decreasing exponentially. So this is really uh, powerful, and that's basically uh, motivated 
the fact that people talked about mass quenching as if the mass was the main driver of this quenching. But actually, it might not be. And the second thing is that when you look at those guys, so typically you look at them when they are in the process of quenching, and you look at the morphology, they basically have disks. So they are those red disks or green disks. So typically the, the, the process, the quenching process, uh, is not able to destruct or to, 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 uh, to, to remove the disks. So this is what we could work. I mean, this is consistent with a, star form, uh, with a starvation scenario where uh, basically the galaxy will consume all the gas that is available until there is no more gas. But there is just some, we have to explain how the, the, the cold gas inflows are stopped and uh, prevent uh, further star formation. But uh, recently, or more recently, um, I studied those guys, uh, so galaxies that were in transition uh, in the, in the, the so-called Green Valley. And uh, what I could uh, show, it was not expected at all, was that I was looking actually for uh, feedback processes from AGNs. So the first thing I could show was that uh, for radio loud AGNs, they could not explain the quenching of those massive galaxies because most of these uh, radio loud uh, AGNs were in already quiescent galaxies. But uh, what was not expected was that when you look at X-ray AGNs, uh, you have them everywhere. Uh, within the, this quenching channel. But if you look at the, the X-ray colors, so the hardness ratio, you will see that you have an, uh, how do you say, uh, a probability to host a very, uh, a very hard uh, X-ray uh, um, agents at the center of the Green Valley. And actually, those guys could only be explained um, by late stage mergers. So actually they trace those colors in the X-ray, uh, they trace the coalescence of the supermassive black holes. So they, they are not a tracer of, uh, of a feedback, they are just tracers that you have a, a merger ongoing. So the question is, uh, okay, we are, we are talking about mass quenching and now we are talking about uh, mergers, but those mergers do not happen before the quenching they happen once the, the quenching already started. So how can you explain that? And uh, luckily, uh, some uh, very smart people uh, already thought about uh, different scenarios, but, but uh, so here I could find that within this uh, framework and uh, introduced by uh, Pichon uh, in uh, 2012, uh, 2011 and, and then Codis in 2015, I think, uh, so what you have is that, okay, galaxies form uh, far from uh, cosmic filaments, but with a, a spin parallel to filaments. This is uh, due to the interplay between coal, uh, coal glass, uh, gas flows uh, and, uh, and the alignment of these galaxies is explained by the, this, uh, this interaction. And then when galaxies grow uh, and their dark matter halo grow, uh, and, 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 and merge along cosmic filaments uh, toward the uh, um, groups and clusters, uh, eventually you may reach, reach a, a mass, a mass regime uh, of the halo where you will see that this alignment is no more the same. And um, this, but this happens uh, precisely for, for uh, dark matter halo masses uh, around 10 to the 12, which is the mass of the halos that host and star galaxies. So there is something happening there. And uh, this, this scenario could explain the, 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 an increased uh, probability of uh, finding mergers among M star galaxies. So, so now the question was, uh, okay, but this is the theoretical framework and we have only these observations of mergers in the Green Valley. So uh, could we observationally uh, track down uh, M star galaxies within the Green Valley and look at their distance to cosmic filaments and also the, the fraction of, of uh, merging halos. And what is a merging halo? I mean, uh, you can trace a merger of uh, two halos if you have a pair of galaxies. So this is what I tried to do. So I'm using the Vipers uh, survey, which is a uh, a uh, few years old now, but uh, it's a quite uh, extensive uh, uh, redshift survey. So you see that it's basically below re uh, between redshift 0.5 uh, to redshift 1. So uh, I will only use the 
0.5 to 0.8 because this is where the sampling is the best and where the, the cosmic web reconstruction is the best. Um, so so that's, this is just an illustration. So here you see uh, the, the galaxy distribution and uh, here you see the cosmic web uh, reconstruction with the distance to uh, filaments uh, color coded and the filaments in green. Okay, so now it's the matter of uh, how do you identify pairs? So, okay, I'm working with a spectroscopic redshift uh, measurement. So, uh, typically, that was why I had to use these depths uh, of uh, plus or minus uh, 10,000 uh, kilometers per second uh, for the, the difference of the, of the, sp the, the speeds between the two, uh, the two galaxies or the, the difference in redshift, which is about 0.0. 0.05 in redshift, um, and uh, on the sky, what you want is about uh, a difference, uh, an astrometry uh, difference of uh, 100 kiloparsec, and this is just for the first selection of your candidate pairs, and then you uh, try to use more physical um, uh, quantities. So uh, you try to use the uh, <clears throat> The radius uh, or the, of the the varial, varial uh, radius, and uh, also the escape velocity. But obviously, uh, you only have access to one uh, dimension of the velocity, the radial part. So, if you have two galaxies that are flying uh, on this direction, transversal direction, you cannot say if they are too rapid to be uh, bounded. But that's that's what it is. So. Um, and also I define major pairs, so it's like major mergers, but so, uh, for, so pairs of galaxies with uh, similar masses, so uh, with the same threshold, so uh, uh, a ratio of four in the, in the stellar mass. Uh, this is important because if we have, in the framework I, I, I talked about, obviously when you have a, a merger of two halos, uh, the more they are massive, uh, the more they will influence each other and they might eventually uh, affect their uh, angular momentum. So, so in total, I have about a thousand pairs of galaxies for a, uh, a sample of uh, 35,000 galaxies and I have more than half of those pairs that are major, uh, major pairs. Okay, so this is just uh, the, di the distance to the filament uh, for those two fields uh, of the survey. And this is where the pairs uh, concentrate, so as I basically follow the, the cosmic, I mean the cosmic filaments. And in red, I'm sorry, it's not very uh, easy to see, but in red, you see that uh, the, the, the major pairs or the pairs of more massive galaxies or similar mass uh, galaxies, they are even closer to filaments. But it's, it's not quantitative, it's just a qualitative assessment. But I, I let you judge by yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So now if we want to have more, uh, this is basically the, the only slide uh, with the results of my talk. So. We'll spend a bit of time on that. Uh, so here, what I have plotted is, okay, so here is the distance to the filaments, and you have here the uh, uh, specific star formation rate versus uh, mass, so this is the, the usual uh, uh, plot. Uh, so you have the main sequence here of the star formation. Here you have the what we will call the Green Valley, so intermediate uh, SSFR uh, galaxies. And here you have the, the most quiescent galaxies. Uh, the discretization you have here is uh, is due to the fact that it's I mean the SSFR is less is not very well constrained with with the SED fitting, but still we can be confident uh, on those uh, th these parts here. Um, so here it's the same distance, but uh, you normalize it by the typical distance between your galaxies at given redshift. So it's supposed to be slightly more uh, representative of the uh, the actual. Uh, distance to filaments. I forgot to mention that I excluded uh, all any galaxy that was close to the, the nodes of the cosmic web, uh, closer to five uh, megaparsecs. So just to be sure that we only consider galaxies that are close to filaments, but not too much affected by 
cluster environments or okay uh, so oops sorry oh, oh, oh. no it's not back okay so uh, okay so here what you have is just typically the the, the the local density so it's just to try to disentangle this uh, distance to filaments from the, the local density and here what you have is the uh, gal the, the, the pair the fraction uh, so this is the pair fraction uh, for, for the main sequence and then in the green valley and then in quiescent galaxies and here the same but for major pairs okay so and here it's a more tricky stuff it's just the ratio between the distance of pairs over the uh, to the distance of any galaxy uh, in the in the same uh, of the same mass and SSFR so so here what you see is that clearly um, when you are in the main sequence the uh, the pair fraction is quite constant but once you you, you cross I mean, once you arrive in the, in the Green Valley, you have the pair fraction is uh, rising, and it's very, uh, uh, it's rapid. It's not a big difference, but it's rapid. The difference is uh, arise uh, rapidly. Same thing for more massive galaxies. So, uh, no, mass or uh, um, galaxies of similar masses. So you see that it's even clearer. And here, what you can see is that uh, typically the distance uh, of, uh, of pairs to filaments uh, is const is the same than the the distance of any typical galaxy uh, in the in the in the main sequence, but it starts to increase before the the, the Green Valley. Okay. So these are the two uh, the two uh, conclu uh, not conclusions, but the two uh, things you can you can take from these uh, diagrams. So first, uh, the dark matter halo merger. So a pair is a dark matter a halo merger uh, increases upon quenching. So uh, as soon as it's quite simultaneous. And then um, you, you seem to see that there is a decrease um, in, the, um, in the distance of pairs uh, uh, versus uh, other galaxies uh, before quenching. So that might be some uh, subtle effect to, to check later on. So this is my summary. So first, uh, massive galaxies merger are confirmed to be more likely to happen along filaments. So this is something you find uh, in the simulations, but also uh, in other works. Uh, halo mergers and the quenching of their mass host ga uh, entire galaxies appear to be simultaneous. So this, is, this is the main result, I think, of my thing, is really to, to, to link mergers. I mean, you cannot say that all galaxies that quenched, all M-star galaxies that, that quenched um, went through a, a merger of their halos, but at least you can say that if you have a halo, uh, halo merger of these guys, they will be quen uh, quenching and start quenching and uh, so this is uh, clearly you see the impact. Uh, and then the question is, uh, do we have a more subtle effect that would happen even before? And uh, could we say that galaxies tend to uh, be in pair and that will affect their distance to, uh, to the closest filaments and then eventually uh, make them quench? So that's, uh, that's something to work on. Uh, that's, that's it. Thank you very much. So, uh, do we have questions? Uh, very cool work. Uh, I'm wondering uh, if, so f firstly, I'm wondering what is the closest pair that you have? <laughs> and uh, does like quenching stop once like it becomes very close? Okay, so I didn't, uh, for now, I just um, have a selection of pairs and I did not record all the distance to their nearest neighbor. But that's something I, I could do, uh, you're right. And to see if there is a, a stronger effect if, depending on the distance, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I, I didn't do the analysis yet. Hi. Have you considered looking at the effect of uh, the number of mergers as a function of distance to the saddle points? Rather no, than no, no, not yet. Uh, that's the only thing I checked is versus the um, the cosmic filament, uh, but I didn't check any other type of uh, topological uh, 
So in the end, what you find is that what matters is the fact that there is a merger, not that this happens close to filaments, right? So it, seem, it seems like uh, you need both. Um, so, so actually, the thing is that here, actually, here you select only pairs, so you have a bias. But clearly, you see that there is an effect. On average, uh, you, you see. But it's, there is no uh, break in the, the evolution. So, so galaxies. This plot, I cannot see the, the label on the color bar, but. This one? Yeah. Uh, this is the, the uh, no, normalized distance to, uh, to the skeleton. Oh, to, okay. So it's quite smooth, the evolution. So that's why I cannot say that the distance itself is sufficient for the quenching. You need the distance plus something else. And that might be the merger of. of fairly comparable uh, halos. Uh, and uh, so my question to the people uh, here would be, um, is it possible that the merger of two massive galaxies or massive halos of comparable uh, masses, is this merger able to have an impact on the, rep the, the velocity with which you, you will join the filament? That's uh, also a question I have. Is it? Hmm? OK, so let's say you, you merge. You, you, you have two halos of uh, similar masses. They merge. Will they reach the, filament, the closest filament faster because they, they merged? Or will they? You see what I mean? Is it possible that to accelerate the, the, the speed to which you will get to the core of the filament because you merged? Is there is is there any dynamical effect? But I'm not uh, at all in, the, in that part of the physics, so that's a question I have for you. If it's not the case, this is, we can just skip that uh, reflection. But if it is, it's uh, interesting. I guess you can't look, but is it uh, the distance the filaments, or is is it just perhaps the density? background, maybe not whether you're in a filament or so, not, can you check? So that's a very good question. So that's why, so here indeed you have the density, oh, but uh, in principle, uh, since here you have the, you already corrected for part of the density, uh, average density, you should be less dependent on that. And also here clearly uh, you, uh, you do not have this, uh, this problem. So here it's a fraction, so it's not, a, it's not an issue, but here you divide the, the distance of pairs versus the distance of any galaxy of the same color and, and mass. So um, in principle, we are not too much dependent on the density. We are really looking at the distance to the filaments. We are far from nodes, from the nodes, and also we, so hopefully we are not too dependent on the, and actually what we see here is that the local density is like the clustering. Basically, you trace the, the mass of the halo of the galaxies. So when you select your galaxy pairs, uh, you said you uh, did a separation of a D node of five, yeah. Uh, do you know five megaparsecs? Do you, do you vary this at all and see if that changes the results? Actually, so <laughs> I did that just before. <laughs> so, <laughs> so because Stefan told me you should be careful about not including the, the nodes, and uh, it does not uh, have a strong impact. But it's it's better. Uh, yes, okay. There is an impact there. So actually, uh, if I don't do that here, I am more. I, I see more something like that. So it's like the density, uh, there is some, some here the, 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 the evolution is very smooth, but if I do not exclude nodes, I will have a sharper break uh, in the evolution. So, yeah. Um, your second result was that the mergers and the quenching appear to be simultaneous. Mm -hmm. um, do you mind unpacking the word simultaneous? <laughs> no, it's a, 
Actually, yeah. But I mean, it's just to say that when you, okay, I didn't plot uh, evolutionary tracks, but let's say that you agree that galaxies tend, uh, tend to grow in mass with time. So we can expect that they will move along the main sequence until they reach a mass where they will quench, okay? Uh, the thing is that when you look at the major uh, pair or the, 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 the dark matter uh, mergers fraction, uh, it seems that there is a sharp um, uh, difference when you uh, enter the Green Valley, when you start quenching. So that's why I say it's simultaneous, but yes. obviously it's not a, a very uh, physical... Uh, I mean, that needs to be very, I mean, much better constrained. So maybe interesting to add, um, a while ago, I looked at a, the outskirts of a cluster and I found at a specific radius away from the cluster, um, an increase in these red disks. So the galaxies that are still retain a disk, but have already started to quench. That was in a group outside and also at just outside the Burial radius, but you're excluding all of that, right? In <laughs> principle, yes. So, in principle, we are really looking at uh, massive galaxies that are far from clusters. Mm. So, and I would say that on average, that's that's true because I know. That, I mean, I, I did that. I mean, if you look at, okay, if you if you look here, you will see that the the, the typical density of massive galaxies is not is is really uh, around the how do you say. Uh, the typical density of the universe for, for a long, uh, so it's, it's, those guys are not clustered galaxies, I mean, clustered. Yeah, and they're also they are probably not disks, right? I'm sorry? And they're, if you say they're massive, so they're... They are about 10 to the 10.6, as I said, so yeah. they, here yeah. you are, yeah, but uh, here you have the mass, so you can, you can mm. see. Uh, yeah. Um, cool, but, thanks. Do you have more questions? So you started uh, by showing to us the NRK diagram and yes. identifying the Green Valley from the NRK. Here you plot things differently in the star formation rate versus mass plane. What's the reason for changing? And because, because here we are more reliant. I did not on want to, to spend too much time explaining the NUVRK diagram, okay. but actually what, what you have in the NUVRK is uh, basically it evolves uh, in the same direction. So typically here you have the main sequence and uh, the mass will evolve in that direction plus the dust, uh, you have an effect from the dust and it will uh, around one, uh, actually it will uh, saturate and the only explanation for those colors is dust. And then what you will have is that the galaxies you select here in this very band have a very narrow range in mass, in stellar mass. So, yeah, those two, the difference is that when you are in the other diagram, the, the quiescent galaxies are at the bottom of the diagram, but here they tend to redden, so yeah, they, uh, they are on the upper part of the, of the diagram. But yes, actually, uh, you yeah, can I use both diagrams. That when you use star formation rate versus mass, you are, I mean, dependent also on the assumption. Made yes, that that's a very the, okay. Yeah. I see your point. So what I did was to focus only on the uh, on the redshift range where I can constrain the SSF bar, and so where basically I can constrain the J band restraint. Okay, so okay. that's yeah, that's a very good question. So I could show you the other diagram uh, I have. So quick question on this uh, diagram, you say that the color trace, the hardness of your yes. X-rays, and that's basically black hole coalescence? Yes, actually, uh, th this can be, okay, you have two ways to have a strong hardness ratio. Either you have the uh, hard uh, emission that is uh, much higher than the, so this, I could not show everything, but what I have in the paper, I sh uh, it, y you see that if the hardness ratio increases in the Green Valley, it's because the soft emission is absorbed and this is a trace of, uh, of a coalescence of the supermassive black hole. If you have a higher emission in the hard X-ray, that's a different story. Okay. And 
So that's that traces the very, very late stage yes. of the merger, yes. right? So when did that start? That's a very good question. So what I did in the in, in that paper was to compare with simulations. So typically, what you can expect if you have if basically you have this uh, coalescence at the center of your of the Green Valley, you can expect that at least they took at least one giga year to between the, the, the first flyby and the coalescence of the black hole for M star galaxies of uh, similar uh, masses. So both uh, both galaxies have the same ma same mass. Uh, you take at least uh, one giga year from simulations. Okay. So that's consistent because here, as I said, you have between one and more and 3.5 giga years to cross the Green Valley. So okay. I mean. Thank you very much. Uh, who's the name? Uh, yeah. Please plus. <laughs>